So welcome to this video. Uh, we will talk about advanced fluid mechanics, which builds on the, the previous theoretical lecture about uh, basic fluid mechanics. So watch those videos first before you go on to, to watch these. It will be heavily uh, reliant on, on mathematics. So you must be able to, to interpret uh, partial differential equations to understand the contents here. Uh, we first go over the physical properties of fluids uh, in, a, in a deeper uh, depth than the last time. Then we go over uh, methods of flow characterization. And then we talk about uh, fluid mechanics, uh, more specifically the Navier-Stokes equation and uh, some other things. And we look at diffusion once again, but uh, this time uh, in, in terms of dynamics. So um, first thing uh, I would like to, to tell you is that I mark the important quantities in color and uh, these colors will be consistent uh, during the slides. So uh, try to pay attention to that. And uh, I mean the variables will be indicated. So first variable uh, that I indicated is uh, the density. And uh, this is mass density, which is uh, mass over volume, uh, which is uh, quantified by kilograms per cubic meters. So we start from the, the ground and then build on it uh, step by step. But uh, I'm sure you have heard about density in secondary school, but uh, now we will use it for some other things as well. Uh, so what, what, does, uh, what does mass density give us? Uh, mass density is uh, at all points of a homogeneous object equal to its uh, total mass divided by its total volume. And on the right side here, you have uh, layers of uh, fluids with, with different densities and also different viscosities, but uh, now we, we focus on the density aspect. And uh, these layers uh, can uh, uh, stand on top of each other uh, based on the, the density distribution. And down here is a solid which has the highest uh, density. So from highest to lowest, uh, we, we go upwards and uh, these can be layered on top of each other. Specific weight is uh, density times gravity in uh, newtons per cubic meter. And don't let this confuse you. Right now it's not surface tension. At the moment it means a specific weight. But uh, generally when we talk about fluidics, we will refer to uh, surface tension uh, denoted by gamma. And relative density, also known as uh, specific gravity, is uh, denoted by sigma, and it is the ratio of uh, your sample to water density. So density of your sample to density of water, where water is uh, at four degrees Celsius which is uh, close to the maximum density of water. So maximum density is when it is solid, obviously, but uh, this is four degrees for standard. And uh, here is a, is a table which uh, summarizes these uh, quantities for, for common materials. So you see how they uh, compare to each other, air being the, the least dense out of uh, all these uh, substances in this table and mercury being the densest uh, among all of these. And oil is slightly less dense than water. Uh, so let's move on to talk about the properties of uh, fluids and by properties I mean uh, physical properties. So first of all, shear stress and uh, you should recall from the last lecture um, cheat sheet is down here. Uh, stress means force over area, so force over unit area, force over unit area. 
And uh, if we look at a diagram of uh, um, dimension and velocity, imagine this as a channel. So you have the wall here, and then you have the, the dimension from the wall uh, to the other towards the other side. Uh, shear stress can be denoted as uh, such a vector which uh, causes a displacement. Uh, I mean, it causes a displacement with a velocity of uh, u. And this one is the uh, viscosity that uh, you should recall from last time, uh, dynamic viscosity to be specific. Um, and viscosity is, from this, defined as the shear stress required to drag one layer of fluid at a unit velocity to distance y. So that's what you see here. And this is basically what this diagram is all about. So one layer of fluid dragged to a distance of y with a velocity of u uh, at the effect of uh, a shear stress of tau. Dynamic viscosity, uh, which uh, we have already introduced in the last lecture, but let's uh, look at it in, um, in another light. Dynamic viscosity can be expressed from this uh, expression as such. And uh, the unit is Pascal second, uh, which is also called uh, POAS. Kinematic viscosity is uh, typically denoted by nu, and uh, it is dynamic viscosity divided by the density, which has the unit of uh, square meters per sec, which is uh, often called uh, Stoke. But uh, in, in our lecture series, we will stick with SI units and, uh, and we will use the metric scale everywhere consistently. Um, so about the viscosity, this is water and honey. Let's uh, say it like that to, to make it easy. Uh, it's a highly viscous material and a material with low viscosity or lower viscosity comparably. And as usual, all the terms, uh, all the variables that, uh, that you should pay attention to, all the, the units, characteristics, and so on, will be um, in this uh, table down somewhere or somewhere on the, on the screen where you can see uh, what the units are and what they mean. So um, on this slide, um, I would like to, to introduce you the, the concept of uh, the temperature dependence of viscosity. Um, and, and here is uh, a graph of the temperature dependence of the viscosity of water, which um, drops off to its minimum at uh, around its boiling point. Uh, so you can see on this scale, it uh, approaches zero uh, as it is heated up to its boiling point, whereas at the point of uh, solidif uh, solidifying or the, the liquid solid transition, it goes up towards it, its maximum. So temperature dependence can be expressed as, uh, as such, where uh, T is the temperature and A and B are, are parameters. They are constants that uh, you can look up. The continuum assumption was already introduced in the, the last lecture, but uh, we will look at it again because it gives, uh, it proves the validity of uh, whatever we talk about today. And the continuum assumption is an idealization of continuum mechanics under which fluids can be treated as continuous, even though on a microscopic sla uh, scale they are composed of molecules. Um, and it is mostly correct because uh, we say we stay above uh, the point value and the size domain be below which uh, molecular interactions would dominate, causing rapid variations in, uh, for instance, density. So on the scale that we operate, there are no uh, uh, there are no uh, variations between uh, the different points in uh, in your flow. Uh, so it is still the scale where molecular interactions do not dominate. And uh, under the continuum assumption, the observable properties such as uh, density, pressure, temperature, bulk velocity are uh, taken as well-defined 
uh, at, uh, at infinitesimal volume elements, uh, which means uh, they are small in scale compared to the characteristic length. Uh, so, but they are still large in comparison to the molecular length scale. So uh, for the whole of our fluid, these properties are well-defined and uh, will be valid between any two points. Now, um, about the Euler equations. Um, so, in, in, in our course and uh, in this lecture, we will focus on uh, incompressible flows. Uh, if you remember from the, the last one, uh, what incompressible and compressible means, we will focus on incompressible and uh, we will also consider water incompressible even though it is uh, slightly compressible under the, the right amount of pressure. But we will consider it incompressible because in the pressure scale that we work with, it is essentially incompressible. And um, uh, what you see on the right side, explanation of terms. So hopefully you know about this. You must have probably studied about it uh, in one of your mathematics course. If not, then this lecture will be quite difficult, but, uh, but you must uh, have studied about uh, differential equations. So the Nabla operator just means uh, differentiating for all spatial coordinates. And um, these equations that we, we talk about, they give the basis to, to whatever we talk about in this lecture. So first of all, conservation of mass. And uh, it states that uh, for any system, uh, close to all transfers of matter and energy, the mass of the system must remain constant over time as the system's mass cannot change, so quantity can neither be added nor removed. Therefore, the quantity of mass is conserved over time. For a given closed uh, surface in the system, the change in time of mass uh, enclosed by the surface is equal to the mass that uh, traverses the surface which is uh, this whole thing. Uh, positive if matter goes in and negative if matter goes out. And again, time dependence, space dependence, and uh, recall all the, the variables are shown uh, and the material properties and then whatever you need to remember are shown on the right side. So the second thing is conservation of momentum in a closed system, so one that does not exchange any matter with its uh, surroundings and is not acted on by external forces, the total momentum remains constant. This fact, known as the law of conservation of momentum, is implied by Newton's uh, law of motion. So, um, change of velocity over time, or change of velocity in space, and uh, change of uh, pressure then uh, finally the conservation of energy um, states that uh, the total energy of an isolated system remains constant uh, so it is said to be conserved over time and uh, in this equation E is the total internal energy which is defined as such so this is energy per unit volume. I would like to also point out that uh, density is a dominant property in all of these. So quite important to, to take note of. And uh, next to that, we have uh, flow velocity and pressure that, uh, that play an important part. So on the material property side, density and on the on the effect or the dynamic side flow velocity and pressure and uh, take note also of uh, of the coordinates so and the dimensions time and uh, spatial dimensions um, it's not highlighted but uh, the spatial dimensions are uh, defined by the differentiation So what does this give us? From, from this, uh, we know that, uh, that mass, momentum and energy are conserved in our system. It's the, the basis 
of uh, all of uh, fluid dynamics. But now we can move on to talk about characterization of the flows. And for that we have several dimensionless numbers. Uh, first would be, which you probably have heard about uh, for aircraft, the Mach number. Uh, it is relating or it relates the flow velocity to the speed of sound. This is not important for us. We can cross it out because we stay way below uh, the scale where it becomes relevant. Reynolds number, this is very important because um, this tells when the transition between laminar and turbulent flow uh, happens, uh, under what uh, conditions, and by conditions I mostly mean uh, characteristic length, flow velocity, and then you also have uh, material properties. And uh, in this case, the dynamic viscosity is denoted by another letter, just to, to confuse you a bit more, uh, but it still means the dynamic viscosity. Um, yes, and uh, we will uh, look at another slide about the Reynolds number in, uh, in a bit more detail. And the Nudsen number, uh, that um, relates this uh, mean free path, which is the average distance a molecule travels before collision with another molecule to the length scale. So it just helps to make a difference between what's micro scale and what's uh, below or what is uh, macro scale. Uh, so it relates this uh, um, mean free path to the characteristic length. Uh, so yeah, uh, one more clarification or clarifying slide about uh, the Mach number. Uh, we typically stay way below uh, the, the flow velocity where uh, this becomes an issue because our uh, flow velocities in microfluidics are, are far below the speed of sound. So looking a bit more at the Reynolds number. From the last lecture, you probably also remember the difference between laminar and turbulent flow. So laminar means that the flow lines don't cross or the different uh, layers in the flow don't cross each other. They, uh, the layers uh, or the different phases mix through their boundaries, through their interface. But in turbulent flow, the, the layers can cross each other. They uh, can take uh, a chaotic uh, flow path and, uh, and uh, mix with each other quite easily. Uh, so this has a lot to do with the velocity, the, 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 the dimensions of your system, and uh, also has to do with, uh, with the dynamic viscosity. So this is mostly the size regime where we exist in microfluidics. And if you look here, there's uh, an example why. So if we look at a, a typical microfluidic system, typical would be 100 microns across, but let's look at the large uh, microfluidic channel with 500 microns across. This is something that uh, we can 3D print uh, in our lab. Then. Um, characteristic length will be maximum 500 microns. And uh, let's look at water, because we mostly work with water or water with something in it. But in any case, it is a diluted uh, mixture where most of the, the solution is made up of water. Then dynamic viscosity is such. And for the velocity, let's look at a, a typical situation then the Reynolds number will be 5.6, which is way, way below the 2300 limit. So it is laminar. But uh, typically in real traditional microfluidics with 100 micron channel length and uh, flow rates of uh, 1 to 100 microliters per minute, we have uh, less than one Reynolds number. Then above, 2,300 and below 4,000 we have transitional flow and above 4,000 we have a turbulent flow. Uh, here's, by the way, a way to calculate the characteristic length. So 
It's uh, four times the cross section divided by the wetted perimeter. What this means is if you have a channel like this, uh, and a, a rectangular uh, or square in this case uh, cross section, then uh, you have the area and the perimeter are all the sides uh, summed up. So um, here's a, a nice representation of uh, how these flows look. If we have an object, uh, in this case a cylindrical object in the flow, then uh, or uh, yeah, uh, over a cylinder the flow looks like uh, such uh, under uh, far under uh, Reynolds number of one. At around 10, you have uh, already some, uh, some strange phenomena happening after the cylinder. Above 90, you already have a more chaotic flow after the cylinder. And then as we go higher, uh, this becomes more and more um, turbulent after your cylinder. So uh, one thing I would like to call your attention to is uh, this is why you never uh, row a boat after the pillar of a bridge. Because uh, if you look at a river like the Danube in Budapest, don't ever think of uh, rowing your boat anywhere close to, to the pillar of a bridge because you will catch this and there will be turbulence and there will be downdrift. So you can easily drown uh, in, in something like, like that area, even if the river is otherwise calm. But this is not something that will happen in microfluidics. So, mountain number, uh, to, to speak a bit more about that, how it's defined, is defined as the ratio between the Mach number and the Reynolds number. And I will have a whole table that uh, will just show the, the different conversions. Uh, so you can look at it and uh, and then see how these relate to each other in one of the next slides. It's also uh, defined as uh, uh, surface tension and uh, and the dynamic viscosity divided by two and and uh, under the square root. So why this Nutzen number is important is uh, once again to define the the dimension scale that we are working in. And uh, under 0 0.01, um, the assumption of, uh, of uh, fluid as a continuum is valid. Whereas uh, between 0 0.01 and, uh, and 0 0.1, uh, we have so-called slip flow. So recall that uh, with a parabolic flow profile, the flow velocity at the boundary is zero. And uh, in slip flow, it is possible to have a non-zero flow at the boundary, which uh, makes our life a lot more difficult uh, in terms of uh, simulation, for instance. So taking a parabolic flow profile uh, for, for a simulation model is the easiest case you can work with. Um, and between 0.1 and 10, the flow is in transition uh, regime. And then uh, above 10, the, the molecular flow is governed by the kinetic theory of gases. So if you look at, uh, if you look at this in, in, in close up, then um, this is what we will have to work with in microfluidics. So the, the Poisy flow profile, you know, Parabolic flow velocity is the highest in the middle and the lowest on the side. And then um, uh, this is way below one uh, at around uh, or below 0 0.01. Uh, when the Nudson number is above one, then uh, you transition to uh, a free molecular flow, which um, is rather characteristic of gas. And then here's what happens at an orifice. Um, so this, uh, this will also uh, uh, characterize a flow of, uh, of, uh, of gases again. And um, 
in our example, the Nadsen number is this small. So in the example from uh, the, one of the previous slides, this is the Nadsen number. So it's way, way below 0 0.01. Therefore, the continuum assumption is valid. And uh, this is the table that I mentioned before, where you can see the relation between uh, all these various uh, uh, dimensionless uh, flow characterization numbers. Um, we will come back to some of these in uh, later slides, but uh, what I have here is the way to calculate the, the ranges and uh, what relates to what exactly. So the D number relates uh, centrifugal forces to the flow path, which defines uh, the effect of mixing. And uh, just so you know, this guy has a certain mixer geometry uh, named after him, which we also call a snake mixer, but that's uh, what, what they also call is a D mixer. Um, in any case, Reynolds number and uh, the characteristic uh, length and the channel radius. And in this range, we have unidirectional flow. And then above this, we have flu fully turbulent flow. But needless to say, we will stay here in microfluidics. Capillary number, we come back to this uh, when we talk about droplet microfluidics. It relates uh, viscous forces to surface tension. And under this uh, threshold, capillary forces will dominate. We will see what that means uh, a bit later. Um, the Weber number relates uh, inertial forces to surface tension. And above a certain threshold, droplet formation will be likely. So you can use these to determine whether your system is in the appropriate size regime. Uh, the bond number relates gravity to surface tension, which uh, defines whether your droplet can be spherical or flat. Then um, there's this uh, Peclet number, which re uh, relates convective to diffusive uh, mass transfer. Convective is particles traveling in a stream of fluid. And diffusion, if you remember from the last time, is... Uh, an isotropic spreading of uh, particles over time. And the Nudsen number relates the mean free path to the characteristic length, and we have already talked a lot about that, so no need to spend more time. And we have arrived to the crux of uh, fluid mechanics, the Navier-Stokes equation. And uh, this is the conservative form. So Remember that uh, mass, uh, inertia, and or mass, momentum, and energy are conserved. Um, so again, conservation of momentum that uh, makes this whole thing valid. This is the conservative form, and uh, and it is for incompressible Newtonian fluids, which means that uh, the viscosity is constant over time, and uh, there are no external forces uh, playing a part here. And if you look closer, then you can find parts of the conservation of momentum equation. So recall this was number two on uh, our uh, slide with the Euler equations. Uh, that is why I had to show this to you, because that is why these are valid and that is how these are derived. Uh, so the, the, you can discover this term in uh, the, the convective term of uh, the Navier-Stokes equation. And you can discover this in, uh, on the other side, where uh, pressure is related to, uh, to mass density. So here is convection, which remember again, is uh, particles flowing in, in a stream with a stream. So um, it's a change over space. And then we have diffusion 
which is rather a change over time in every direction um, flowing out from a, from a center, um, wherever that center is inside your fluid stream. These are the two kinds of uh, flows that we must consider. And um, if we look at it even closer, uh, this is just a, a reorganization. You can, you can see the, the physical quantities and uh, the processes characterized by the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, and you can also see what this is uh, similar to. So it is mass times acceleration equals force, which is basically Newton's second law of motion. That's what I was trying to get to with all these, uh, this long explanation. So mass defined as mass density, change of velocity over time, flow speed and direction, which defines uh, the convective um, aspect of this flow or convection itself, uh, pressure drop and internal stress defined as uh, uh, viscosity or as the change of, uh, of, uh, of uh, flow velocity um, related to viscosity. Uh, so moving even further, uh, what can you do with all this? Okay, yeah, we have defined uh, the Navier-Stokes equation, but, uh, but why? Uh, the reason for that is because this side defines inertia and this size, side defines divergence of stress. And what you can use it for is calculating how your flows will behave. So you can use it to simulate uh, uh, fluid mechanics. And it is the basis of weather forecasting. So movement of uh, the different layers of, uh, of fluids. Obviously, it's not as simple as this. So this is the least complex form of the Navier-Stokes equation. You have uh, different forms for uh, turbulent flows, uh, which in, in case of the weather uh, are mostly what, what you need to solve. But um, it is also the basis of computational fluid dynamics. And in essence, it all uh, stems from this one, this really simple form of equation, but with a lot of other terms to account for uh, the different external forces and to account for turbulence and so on. Uh, so here uh, you see uh, a typical uh, image of uh, a fluid dynamic simulation. In this case, uh, the effect of uh, wind on a, on a ship or on a boat, whatever you would call it. And, uh, but you will learn a lot more about simulations. So, uh, so let's, let's maybe move on. Um, diffusion. The, the final thing that I would like to talk about uh, in this video. And this is how you define the diffusion coefficient for substance A diluted in solvent B. So substance A diluted in solvent B. And let's say at the moment, for the sake of simplicity, Substance A is a water-based dye and substance B is just water. Um, and it spreads out over time. So if you look at uh, this uh, container over a longer period of time, then uh, eventually the mass that you introduced will spread out wider. So what do we have here uh, to define the, the diffusion coefficient? Dynamic viscosity we have uh, talked about before. R is the radius of the diffusing particle. So the dynamic, viscosity, the dynamic viscosity of the solvent, uh, the radius of uh, the diffusing particle. K is the Boltzmann constant. So constant um, defined by the ambient. Uh, this is just pi. And these two are what you should pay attention to. So the radius of the diffusing particle and uh, the uh, dynamic viscosity. And then diffusion constant, if you uh, just uh, 
uh, multiply and divide the units, then uh, what you come out with at the end is square meters per second. And uh, yeah, if you really want to go into details on the theory, then I recommend to just take uh, uh, the, the units and just do the calculation simply with the units to see that it always comes out uh, with the right units at the end. That uh, helps to understand it a bit better with uh, whatever expression we talk about. So if uh, this is the, the diffusion coefficient, then uh, the diffusion equation for uh, a certain species A uh, indexed I in this case, and uh, let's, let me say that uh, species can be anything, can be another type of liquid, can be uh, a microparticle, uh, but in any case it is uh, dissolved in, um, in a large amount of solvent. So your species compared to the amount of solvent uh, or the concentration of your species compared to the amount of solvent is quite small. The magnitude of the molar flux uh, is equal to the change of concentration in space for your species i multiplied by the diffusion coefficient. And this is what determines uh, diffusion. So in this video uh, we talked about uh, advanced fluid mechanics and uh, we went over the most important physical properties of uh, fluids. And why we did this you will see when we talk about uh, computational fluid dynamics. We talked about flow characterization, we talked about uh, fluid mechanics, and we talked about diffusion. Thank mm -hmm. you.